So in this video we're looking at simple harmonic motion and energy, specifically how potential energy changes, how kinetic energy changes, and then the effects of damping or reducing the energy in the system. Um, so let's just consider a, uh, a pendulum, and it swings backwards and forth. Um, when it uh, has maximum velocity, is right in the center, so V equals max, uh, when it's at its equilibrium. Um, that then means that the kinetic energy has to be the maximum at the center. Okay, and what that then means, because the energy of the system, um, EP, the total energy of the system at any point in time has to be a sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy for a closed system. Um, so the potential energy will be minimum at the center. And if we're talking about um, gravitational potential energy, you might talk about the height um, that it gains uh, as it comes out to the side. It's going to be maximum at the end, and it's going to be zero if you're talking about EP. Okay, so minimum zero. Okay, um, in terms of a spring, if you had a spring uh, that was bouncing, let's just do a small one here. And that spring is bouncing up and down. Your gravitational potential energy, um, you could say, just to make it easier on yourself, you could set it zero at the equilibrium position, and then it's going negative and positive um, from that location. Or you could set it as zero at the bottom and degrees of positive as it increases up in height there. But as uh, even so, the kinetic energy for a spring is still going to be maximum right in the center. Potential energy is going to be um, maximized when it's um, at either end. So in terms of actual real energy that you could do something with, there's energy stored in the spring, um, and you could do that. So uh, we, can <coughs> we can draw some graphs to represent this. Um, we can graph the uh, energy against time. So um, uh, this might look um, a little bit like a sine curve, but um, the let's just, let's just try this. The um, potential energy, if you're starting from equilibrium position, is going to be zero. It's going to go to a maximum positive, and it's going to come down to a maximum negative, and then back and keep cycling through. That's for the um, E P over time. If you're talking about the um, kinetic energy, kinetic energy is going to start off from equilibrium as a maximum, and then it's going to drop down, and it's going to be um, zero um, right at the extreme point of motion here. So it's going to be zero when the um, potential energy is maximum. Um, that's at that's at a full uh, amplitude, and the velocity is temporarily zero while it turns around and comes back the other way. And then it's going to go back to maximum when the potential energy is zero. So it's going to cycle a little bit <coughs> excuse me a little bit behind things like so okay so that's one way to look at it that's energy against time um, we can also look at energy against amplitude and draw a graph there to represent it um, if we're looking at um, uh, let's see what's the easiest way to do this um, Instead of perhaps having um, a zero there, let's go back this way, and we can have a we can have an, an axis like this. So this is the amplitude um, y here on the horizontal axis, and the energy here. Um, so we would say this is positive a, the full amplitude, and negative a, the negative amplitude, um, and <clears throat> potential energy again um, is going to be maximum at extreme amplitudes and zero here um, and it's actually going to cycle down as the velocity increase, increases remember it's under acceleration so the velocity is gradually increasing which means initially the kinetic energy is going to gradually decrease and then all of a sudden it's going to have a sharp decrease okay so that's why it's a curve not a straight line um, and your kinetic energy will necessarily be zero at the extremes, maximum here, and zero again at that extreme. So, and that's going to taper off, and then boom, speedy, speedy increase, and then the same. So, what you would expect, I haven't drawn this to scale, but what you would expect, um, let's just make that EK so it's very clear, and EP. What you would expect is that 
um, these two at any point in time, the potential energy plus the uh, kinetic energy, they would add together to make the total energy, and the total energy is constant all the way through. Okay, so at any point in time, pick here where you've got maximum and minimum, it adds to the total, and minimum and maximum for the other way around, and it also adds to that total if I've drawn my line straight. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about is damping. Um, when you're reducing energy from the system, um, we're going to draw another graph. This is a graph of the oscillations. Okay, so maximum amplitude, minimum amplitude, maximum amplitude, minimum amplitude, and it's actually going to decrease exponentially. So there'll be a kind of an exponential decay envelope, which is a technical term here, um, for the amplitude. So that's the amplitude against time. Um, so in reality, energy is being lost from the system, so the amplitude is decreasing in magnitude, um, and all the displacement would say the amplitude is decreasing ma in, in magnitude. Um, and this is uh, deliberate in certain situations. So certain situations you want, you'd want damping. Um, and a good example is car suspension. Um, car suspension. The spring is the simple harmonic motion bit. Okay, the spring is the simple harmonic motion. The spring, so it will bounce up and down on the springs uh, with simple harmonic motion. There's usually a spring in each corner of the car. But you want damping to reduce the amount of time it's bouncing. Otherwise, it's not a smooth ride. You're just continually going, uh, bouncing up and down. Okay, I'm not going to repeat that. It sounded kind of funny. but um, So what you want is you want dampers to deliberately damp. And that's what your shock absorbers are for. Your shock absorbers are a cylinder um, with a tube that can go in and out according to the height um, of the spring. So the spring's usually coiled um, over the top of that. I won't draw it in a, in a, in right now. But inside is all this fluid which makes it hard for, um, for this to move up and down. So this part's attached to the car. Um, this part's attached to your wheels, roughly speaking and they can compress, so it compresses in this way get shorter and it can ex extend again but your spring will sit usually over the top of this um, and the spring sets the natural height, the equilibrium position and then when you go over a bump it bounces on the spring, the spring goes um, up and down and the dampers slow down that so it wants a really steep decay curve but not so steep that it's just a big hard boom you want to have a little bit of time to bounce so that it's a comfortable ride. And that's really, really cool. Okay. So and one other thing to point out really quickly is that as you're damping, I haven't drawn this particularly well, but your period should be the same. Okay, so you should have the same period. Um, see, I've, I've made it too short over here, but the, the, the wavelength or the period, uh, it should be the period actually because we're talking about time on this axis, period doesn't change with damping, no change, no change. So um, interestingly, uh, this means when your um, pendulum is swinging backwards and forwards, okay, might be going at a small amplitude, or it might be going at a large amplitude, okay, but the period does not change, so period, no change. And that's why it doesn't matter when you're doing practicals to do with this, whether you start at a particular angle or not. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Not important, not relevant to the period. And that's proven true in the period in the equation of the period uh, for both a spring and for a um, pendulum. 2 pi square root L over G. And if you're dealing with a pendulum, it's M over K. The 2 pi is obviously unitless, so it's irrelevant. Um, G and K are the spring constant and the force due to gravity and L and M is the length and the mass, but nowhere in that is the amplitude or the displacement. The force is proportional to the displacement and it makes sense because if you get to a larger um, displacement you'll have a greater restoring force which is what causes the acceleration to be greater bringing it back in the same same time period causing no change. So that's that, that's damping. That's energy and damping and that I think is everything you need to know for simple harmonic motion. Don't forget to study, do lots of practice questions too.